Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here, and if there's one thing I can guarantee is that you've heard this before, okay? And if you haven't, then I owe you a dollar, okay? When you see me, tell me, tell me, you owe me a dollar. But overall, when it comes to real estate, you always hear the same thing over and over again. The three things that matter the most in real estate are location, location, location. However, there are so many locations in like a neighborhood or a city, whatever it is, and there's always someone in that neighborhood or that city making money. So how do you know exactly what location is right and what to expect from each location and how much money to put into a property depending on the location you're actually going to be investing into? It's not like, hey, in some places you just don't invest. The answer is no. In some places you do invest, but you gotta understand exactly what the risks actually are. So this video right here, I'll tell you about the five types of locations when it comes to real estate and if they're actually worth investing into or if in reality, they're not really worth investing into. Now, if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. So make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified. And on top of that, also destroying the like button. Now, the very first thing is this, guys, okay? These types of locations are basically A locations, B locations, C, D, and F locations. However, there are two main ones we're not going to be studying. Why? Because basically, these two main ones are very risky and some don't even actually pay you a decent return anyway. So, in reality, the A locations are basically in neighborhoods that cost a ton of money. Meaning, when you put money into this property, the amount of money you'll get back in rents, either on cash and cash return, or for example, cap rate, basically your cash flow versus the amount of money you actually put into the property, the answer is it is going to be way too small. Why? Because basically, you're paying way too much money for a property, although it is in a very nice location, nice neighborhood, nice people, all the stuff there, but it's not really for investment purposes. In reality, it's kind of like overpaying for a stock, hoping that with appreciation, it goes up in value later on in life, and then you can go ahead and make your money back. You don't wanna do this with real estate. The only way I see myself investing, and that's not really investing into an A location, is basically when I'm actually going to move there personally after I've achieved, for example, financial freedom. I wanna move into a nice neighborhood with all the nice schools and all the nice gimmicks and so on. But for investing purposes, it's not gonna give you enough money in rents and cash flow to justify the investment. That's the whole idea. Now, the second area you want to ignore is usually going to be the F location. F locations are in places that have very high crime rates and run you very risky problems when it comes to investing. On top of that, when you buy a property into one of these locations, in reality, you run the risk of having a lot of turnovers. Meaning, for example, people don't pay you, you have to take them out. On top of that, you run the risk of a lot of evictions. On top of that, because you're not in a great location, right, that's also very important, the answer is you also run the risk of basically not getting that much appreciation on that property because basically no one wants to live in an area that's basically going on with a lot of crime and so on. So the big risk is, hey, A locations, although they're great to live on personally when you're financially free, they're not really making you a good investment. On top of that, imagine buying, for example, a million dollar property in a very nice area and having to rent that at, for example, like 10000 or 15K a month just to justify the investment. It's gonna be very hard to get that much money in rent. Usually, it might be maybe a premium of maybe 5,000 or $7,000, but getting rents of 10,000 to 15K is going to be very, very hard. On top of that, how are you supposed to, as a new investor, buy a property worth so much money in one of those areas? Also, imagine buying in an F area, right? An F location where there's a lot of crime, not a lot of appreciation, and the tenants that you do get are maybe people that are not likely to actually pay your money back. And then you have to worry about evictions. And you have to worry about tenants that are gonna run over your property. Have you ever seen like those shows where someone gives somebody like a good property and by the end of the year when the lease is up, you go back to the property and it looks nothing the same? Like they went ahead, repainted the walls, put nails everywhere, hang TVs all over the place, the property destroyed, everything stained. And then, then they say, hey, I want my deposit back. All right, that is not what you want. It's a lot of headache there, and there's also a lot of risk there. Although the properties are very, 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 very cheap, they're cheap for a reason, okay? 
cheap isn't always what you want. A good deal, good investment, that's usually what you want. But it depends on the risk and the risk level at an F location is usually way too high. So usually, you know exactly which neighborhoods in your city are A location premium. Very expensive, okay? On top of that, you know exactly which locations are the F locations where basically you don't even want to walk around there. Where it's kind of like, hey, you know, like it's kind of not the place you actually want to live, okay? That's, that's the big idea here. But that leaves us with three main locations for the taken. And that's basically the B locations, the C locations, and also the D locations. So what's the main difference here and what can I expect to actually do here? Well, in a B location, you're kind of getting like a perfect storm in a way, okay? You're basically buying and investing into an area that's actually a very good area, right? It's a very nice area. It's going to give you very good tenants. And on top of that, it's going to give you a lot of appreciation. But because of that also, you might be paying a lot more money or a premium for that property, which basically means less cash flow for you. So that's also something to think about. But the big thing is this, okay? My friend bought a property in a B location, okay? He bought a three family home in a B location. He got some very high quality tenants, which are actually great tenants. They pay on time, everything goes well. If there's a problem, he fixes it ASAP, but they're not basically trying to drain him for maintenance every single month with a new problem over and over again, right? You know, like those annoying tenants, that's not what you want either. But he bought this property in a B location, meaning his mortgage is super high. Why? Because basically he paid a premium to be a part of that B location. Although 10, 15, 20 years from now, that property is going to be worth a lot of money. And as he pays on the mortgage, it's basically going to keep making it more and more money in cash flow. But also keep in mind that although you're not having a lot of problems, basically, hey, they're not paying on time or crazy turnovers, you are going to experience a lot of, hey, you're not really gonna have long-term tenants as much because basically people that can afford those areas paying you higher rents, right, to be in a B location, they're also people that are probably most likely also thinking about, hey, in the future, I also wanna be a homeowner. So that's why I take care of this home as if it was mine, but I'm not gonna stay here for five, 10 years paying you rent money where I can possibly go out there and basically just buy my own property, right? So that's the big thing here. So you can expect to have vacant, not really like crazy vacancies or so, but they might be leaving like every one to two years and so on. That's the general concept when it comes to B locations. But the big benefit is you have appreciation consistent income, high quality tenants, and not that much of a headache. So they make very good investments when it comes to long-term holds and so on to also give you a good cash flow, okay? Now, when you are gonna buy these properties, it is okay to go ahead and spend a little extra money to make the property look very nice for that tenant because again, you're attracting high quality tenants. However, I do want to say this. Just because your property is in a B location does not mean everyone that applies for your property is going to be a B client or a high quality tenant. In reality, you still have to do all the research, okay? Who is this person? What's the background check? How's their credit history and so on, right? You gotta make sure you screen that person correctly so you don't run the risk of saying, hey, it's a high quality place, high quality people, no, okay, there's bad people everywhere. You can't trust that stuff. So make sure you do the screening. Make sure you also do like a mini interview to talk to that person, see exactly if you get any weird vibes from them also, okay? That's also very important. So again, these properties, locations are nice. A little bit more expensive, but basically worth it when it comes to appreciation in the future. But also make sure you are paying a decent price and you're not overpaying for that property. And also make sure you might spend a little bit more money on the rehab for that property or just basically adding things to it to make sure you're attracting those high quality tenants that are going to pay those high quality rents. And by the way, a tip I learned is this guys, okay? When you do have those tenants, it's okay not to raise the rents immediately after the first year, unless they're very high maintenance tenants, okay? Basically, every single month they're calling you about something being wrong with the property and they're costing you a lot of money. But if there are good people, you know, after the first year, don't have to raise rents. Two years, don't raise rents. But on the third year or sometimes the second year, it is okay to say, hey, I'm gonna raise rents by two to 3% or two to 5% of what I used to charge you in the past because again, I do have to keep up with market rates, but they will understand that. And they also understand that basically, hey, 
he is not going to raise the rent or she's not going to raise the rent every single year, but they are going to raise it when it is appropriate. And tenants love that also. Now, the second location you want to focus on is basically a C location. You won't have any crazy appreciation here. However, this is where I live. When I learned this, guys, I was like, wait, wait, wait. I actually live in a C location. It's not a bad location, but it's not a B or an A location. Does that make sense, guys? It's, a, it's an okay location. Now, it means here that your property is going to have a lot of demand. Why? Because the rents are lower and you're also in an okay location, meaning usually you won't have that much vacancies. You won't have basically a lot of fear saying, hey, I'm kind of scared of attracting the wrong tenants here and there. No, you'll get high quality tenants also in C locations. And on top of that, most importantly here, you'll get tenants that are not just going to basically be there like paying you rent on time all this stuff, but are basically going to be there with you sometimes for a very long time. And here's why I say I live in a C location. Now, the landlord here, let's just say, for example, his name is Mr. James. Mr. James, my mom got this place around five years ago, and we still live in the same place. And since then, guys, okay, we've only contacted him around three times. Once was, hey, the fridge broke. The carpet is way too old. We need it fixed after five years or clean. He actually replaced the whole thing and just put on tiles. And the third time was basically something was wrong with like the, like the bathtub and so on. But imagine that, guys, okay? Imagine having a tenant for basically five years and only being called on three times. And when you go to the property, the property looks great. And again, my mom also does it because basically she knows this property where we live, the landlord has not raised the rents in a long time. Why? Because my mom takes care of this property as if it was her own. However, she also does not have the intentions to go out there and buy a property in New York because basically for her, it seems like, oh my gosh, way too much money. I'd rather just stay here until my kids graduate and so on. And for Mr. James Landlord, that sounds like a cherry client, meaning almost a cherry tenant, meaning almost a perfect tenant. They pay on time, usually. They're a long, long-term tenant. They take care of the property and they're also nice to have around, okay? And they also do, like, my mom cleans, for example, like the, like the, what's it called? Like the garage place, like, you know, where the cars are, even though she doesn't have a car there. Just make sure the property looks nice. That's called a dream tenant, if you ask me. That's the core idea. So, see locations. You're trying to buy in a location where there is a lot of demand, some good quality tenants, obviously, but you're not actually going to pay a crazy premium for the property, and you're not going to have that much appreciation, and you can get some decent deals out there in order to increase your cash and cash return, or basically, your cap rate return, okay? That's the core idea. And by the way, if you don't understand cash and cash return or cap rate returns, I do have videos on that and I'll link it down below here. That way you can go ahead and watch the videos also to explain exactly how everything works. Now, so far we've done B locations, C locations. And by the way, when rehabbing a B location, you don't need to put as much money as you would into a B location, right? Because you're not really gonna have that much appreciation and you're not really attracting, for example, like high, 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 high quality tenants, okay? In reality, all you wanna do is make sure the home looks great, it looks nice, and on top of that, it's not just a bare minimum, but it's a nice home that someone actually wants to live in, okay? That's the core idea, but you don't have to go out there and spend the whole bank and so on, okay? However, when it comes to D locations, these ones are a little bit more tricky, and these are usually a maybe, usually a portfolio with B and C properties are gonna do just fine and are gonna do great for basically buying and holding for the long term, appreciating and potentially selling in the future, or for example, just holding on them forever. However, D locations are going to be put in places that are not as bad as an F location, but not as good as a C location, meaning like right in the middle, okay? Not the best neighborhood whatsoever, but it is a decent neighborhood to say the less there, okay? To say the least here. So the idea is that these locations, okay, Although they are not great, usually you're not going to go ahead and spend a ton of money on rehabbing this property or basically making sure it's like up to date with everything out there. No, usually you're going to do the bare minimum. And a lot of these delocations, people use them as Section 8 housing, meaning, hey, it's a government assistance program. We do what we're asked to do, but we're not going to go crazy because basically we know for a fact these tenants, 
tend to go ahead, grab these properties and tear them down, okay? That's the whole idea. So hopefully, and on top of that, okay, when you do rent in a D-location really, right? And you have Section 8 paying you, you get those checks every single month. But tell me, what if the government stops that? In reality, if they do, how likely is it to happen this soon in the game, okay? You'll have like, you know, some like wiggle room to be told, hey, here's when things are stopping. You'll have time to see exactly how the entire game is changing and so on and to change appropriately with the times. But the location are usually going to be for government assistance and so on because basically, if you don't have that, sometimes those tenants are not going to pay you on time and you might need to force an eviction and so on and that can get expensive and sometimes you might have to go to court for hey i want my security back because you i really did to get the property although they didn't and so on and it can be very 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 much a headache and so on okay so guys that is basically it those right there are the five types of locations that you want to take a look at when it comes to real estate and how to treat it, okay? Don't just invest money into a property and treat every property the same, although it's not in the same location. The big thing is, hey, maintenance and vacancies. How often will I have vacancy in this area and how much money will maintenance be on top of that? How good are these tenants, right? Are these tenants good or are they not good? And by the way, it's also kind of like, the way you treat a tenant, they're also going to treat you, right? So whenever a tenant is asking for your help or whatever, make sure to follow up and say, hey, was everything taken care of? Was that person nice to you? Do you need any more help with something else? Knowing that, hey, as a real estate investor, you're also in the game of customer service after all, right? So if people don't like you, maybe they might not care to scratch your walls or or, or mess up your corpus and so on, right? You, you gotta keep that in mind, right? But if you are basically like a stand-up person, you're taking care of the tenants and so on, they're probably gonna take care of you also and also your property. But sometimes you might just get a bad egg and they might not even care. Now, <laughs> it doesn't matter how nice you actually are, right? So keep that in mind, guys. But guys, that's about it for this video. Comment down below. Let me know if it was helpful or not. Any questions, also comment down below. And by the way, guys, I learned this information from Matt Larson, a guy that owned over 400 properties. And on top of that, owned his entire own property management company. So he knows exactly what he was talking about. And I learned this from the course made by Dean Graziosi. The course was amazing. It was great. And it taught me a lot that I needed to know about real estate and so on. Okay, guys? So I'm always learning helping and teaching. So Matt Larson, Dean Graziosi, great guys when it comes to that course that she made. I don't get paid, not a sponsor, not an ad, if you go buy any of the courses or any of the information or books that they actually have. It's just information that I got from there that I wanted to share back with you because it does have a lot of value in it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching this video. And by the way, when you're first investing, what's the point of investing, for example, into 500K properties, 300K properties, usually, you want to be in the range of like maybe like 200 to 300k that way you have a lot of like you know not that expensive at all you buy some properties you rent them out but when you're for example in certain sections of you know like united states of america you might be in california very expensive new york very expensive and so on and so on so just make sure you understand this and apply these rules to your entire market not every market is the same keep that in mind and all the profits for every real estate is the same it depends also on where you live and the location you're actually at i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching as always let us know if you liked it on top of also subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified if you're brand new to the channel and also if you guys want to text me or talk to me one-on-one join my patreon link down below or send me a dm on instagram at tommy bryson and also if you want to watch that video on cap rate, also cash and cash return, how all that stuff works. Well, here's a video right here. On top of that, in my face right here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.